For those of you who are waiting on Boaz, you know that that's just a substitutionary position. But you have to be willing when the Lord brings that man to let that man be a man and take that place. Keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. Ready to read? Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. Why? Why? Because you, you, you look like a man, but you think like a woman. I ain't even get into acting like one. I say, you look like a man, but you think, about a, you think like a woman. How you going to think like a man when a woman raised you? Now you see how far we off, brothers. Why it's imperative that we get number one, relationship with God. Number two, relationship with our houses so things can get in order. See, because when you raise by a woman, none, if that's the situation, had to happen like that, she don't think like a man. No matter if she can use a lawnmower, a hammer, a drill, drive a truck, the way the master, the divine carpenter, created and designed her, she thinks feminine. That's right. So when she talks to her son, even when he gets over 13, crossing into puberty, she's still talking to him from a woman's perspective. Because she can only see through a woman's eyes. Now here you run into old roughneck. The Lord done say cleaning up. And you used to hear in your mommy, it's going to be all right, baby. And you come around past, but you better tighten up, nigga. You need to man up. Get out of the tape. It's all right. Some folks would think I was talking African. But y'all heard me clearly. So then, now, he too embrace it. Because you've been listening to that woman. Then even though she take a little boy, I got the clothes, y'all. Y'all get anything out of there? Yes, sir. She take a little boy to play football. And she get out there. And the first time the coach grab him up in his shoulder pad, <laughs> tighten him up a little bit. No, no, he didn't just grab my baby like that. He ain't got to holler and fuss and cuss at my baby. I don't talk to my children like that, and I'm not going to let nobody else talk. So now, he never gets to engage. This man thing. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because now he's thinking, if, I, if, if, if they clown on me, my mama going to clown. Because now, now you don't have nobody that when you get ready to run out there and clown, to grab you and say, go on, come back here. Don't you do that. That's the coach. Let the coach do his job. Football is a rough game. Basketball is a rough game. The man feeds his family by winning. You want your son starting and playing, but he out there messing up. Now, if the coach can't tighten him up, you get him and take him on to the house. See, y'all don't like that. That's too strong. But Pastor, he need a chance. Yeah, we're going to give him a chance, but we're going to tighten up on him the whole while he out here because we got to make him a man. We're trying to make him a warrior. I can't have a warrior that rather play with G.I. Joe and some other of these little WWF wrestling figures. You know, I'm going to say it. Can I just say it raw? 
rather play with dolls than to play with a football. I'd rather play with that doll and pick up his sword and be ready to go fight. Because now what you're putting in his mind, instead of the protective nature being developed in him, he's going to always be looking back for his mama to be his protector. And instead of him, you helping your child, become a man to take care of somebody's daughter and children one day you help him become a boy ooh lord don't do this to me that leads from one mama's house to another mother's house that he can be intimate with So when the bills get due, now you done married him or shagging with him, whatever y'all want to call it. You looking at him and he looking at you. Because, man, he always made sure the bills got paid. Oh, see, y'all don't like me this morning. But the Lord ain't sent me for you to like me. I already know that. Call them like me because we've been friends for a long time. So that's it. Don't nobody else. I got one. Yeah. <laughs> and but since he's been about 14, 15, he used to be telling what's ever on my mind. So I don't have to worry about my personality. But my point here is, is now you got this guy. He look like a man. But he's thinking like a woman. And if you're not real careful, as a man thinker, in his heart, so is he. So he starts mimicking. He may not be homosexual, but because of the influences and the images that he's been surrounded with, he reflects his environment. So, brothers, we got to get in place. Amen. We got to quit saying, oh, church ain't important. Because the only thing we're doing is teaching our sons that church is not important. That's right. And everywhere Abraham went, he built an altar. That's right. One of the first things Abraham did was built an altar. Amen. When the flood dried up, Noah came outside, built the altar. Yeah. Brothers, here he is our altar. And we have a responsibility to get to that altar yes. so we could offer up sacrifices. That's good. That's real good. Let's go to Job. So we could offer up sacrifices for our household. As for my people, Children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which leave thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. The Lord standeth up and to plead and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyards, the spoil, the poor, is in your house. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, say of the Lord of plenty. That's hopes means plenty. This thing is out of order, man, and, and, and it's our responsibility to get it back in order. Yes, sir. And the first place that order is going to be established and start back that morning is in the house of the man of God. Yeah. You the man of God in that house. I'm the man of God in this one. But when we disperse, everybody goes to his own tent. Yeah. His own tent, your house, is a place of worship. Past this temple. Yeah. It's your job as the man, not your wife's job. Teach your children how to pray. Yeah. Teach them the principles of the kingdom. Don't wait on the woman to do it. 
And I know y'all might think this just because I'm the preacher, but I drill mine every time we get a chance. All week long, I've been asking, Willie, what's the mystery of our faith? What is the mystery of our faith? What is the Apostles' Creed? See, because these basic things I'm just mentioning to you are the foundation of what Christians universally should believe and know. Somebody said, well, Pastor, what is the mystery of our faith? Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. That's what we gather here for in the hope of that blessed hope. That's the drive that keeps us coming week in, week out. Because Christ has died. We know that he's risen. And we're expecting.